أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنحتدي لولا أن هدانا الله ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد صلى على محمد وعلى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب أجيب دعوة الداع إذا دعاني فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمنوا بي لعلهم يرشدون آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم First of all we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for gracing us with this moment and this opportunity in this beautiful and holy month of Ramadan As you can see brothers and sisters we are almost halfway through this month and it is important that we make good use of the blessings of the holy month of Ramadan. The verse I've just quoted from glorious Quran is Quran 2 verse 186. That is Surah Al-Baqarah. In this beautiful verse of Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah discusses the importance and the significance of dua in other words allah is discussing the importance of going back to him and asking him for the fulfillment of our legitimate desires now departing from this ayah my topic of tonight inshallah will be self-discovery through dua or through supplication in other words, how do I get to know myself through dua? How do I understand myself through asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? As you know very well, this holy month of Ramadan is the month of Quran and it is the month of dua. It is a moment that Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala expect each and every one of us to engross with the recitations of the verses of Quran and also to get engrossed and overwhelmed by engaging in du'as and in supplications. My discussion will be of the following stages and I kindly ask brothers and sisters to pay attention to the discourse as we are preparing ourselves to engage with the amal of the night of power with the amal of the night of Qadr. first stage of the examination is to look at the essence of dua what is the essence of dua that Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala in numerous verses of glorious Quran ask us to make dua. Second stage of the examination, we will look at man's need for dua. Do we really need dua? Do we have to make dua? Do we have to attend amal night to recite dua? Do we have to recite dua ukumail every Thursday night? Do we have to recite Dua Tawassul every Thursday night? So second stage of the examination, I want us to look at our needs for Dua. And then the last stage of my examination will be to look at the yardstick to measure standard Dua. In other words, what Dua is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When I go to make Dua, whether on the night of Qadr, 
or any other night or any other place how do i approach dua for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to answer my dua no doubt allah in quran mentioned that this book quran is revealed in this holy month of qadr or holy month of ramadan and as you know very well, in numerous traditions of Ahlul Bayt, السلام, the revelation that happened is the revelation in the heart of our beloved Prophet, peace be upon him and his family. And hence, Allah wa ta mentioned, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr. We revealed it in the night of Qadr, meaning we revealed it in the heart of the Holy Prophet. But then you go to verse 186, which is before the 85. 185 talks about Quran. 186 talks about dua. And as I said, that is what I want to draw your attention to it. What is the essence of dua? Or what is the reality of dua? You know very well in one of the taqibat of our salah, we seek refuge from the dua which is not heard by Allah. Women dua in la yusma. So it's important when I go for dua, I understand the essence of dua so that my dua will not remain hanging, so that my dua would be answered and responded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now to understand the essence of dua, I need to take you a little bit back to a very beautiful spiritual and philosophical discussion that our scholars mentioned لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ حَكِيكَةٌ وَرَقِيكَ that everything that you see or everything that you come in contact with is made up of two dimensions it has a reality and it has substance can you pay attention to understand this once we understand this, then Allah, we will understand dua and we will appreciate dua. What is hakika and what is raqika? I give an example of insan, you sitting next to me. Or maybe give an example which might solve. See, if you look at insan, insan is made up of hakika, reality, and insan is made up of raqika, substance. What is the reality of insan? And what is the substance of insan? Kindly pay attention, brothers and sisters. The reality of insan is what? The amount of years insan spent on the face of the universe. 50 years, 80 years, 100 years, that is your hakika. That is your reality. But these 80 years, or 50 years is not important compared to the substance. What is the substance of insan? Our beloved first Imam, Imam Amir al Mu'minin, alayhi afdal salawat al Musalleen, made it very clear and beautiful as to what constitutes the substance of insan. Imam said, Kima to kullim ri'in ma yuhsinu. Amir al-Mumin is telling us the value of every human being, your value, my value, your substance, my substance, is for you to be able to achieve something out of the 50 years or 40 years or 100 years given to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For instance, you are youth. You are maybe 30 years now. Or 40 years now. What positive thing have you so far achieved with these 40 years and 50 years given to you by Allah? Any positive thing that you achieved out of the years given to you by Allah is called a raqiqatul haqiqa. It's called your substance. It is called your value. Every single day that you wake up and you are able to open your eyes, 
ask yourself what am i going to achieve out of this life given to me by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is raqika that is your value and that is your substance otherwise you spend many years in this world 50 years 40 years 30 years and the more you spend time the more you are far away from allah the more you are far away from baraka baraka here means growth and nama awi no more there is no spiritual growth there is no intellectual growth there is no social growth if there is no growth in your life out of the years given to you by allah then you do not have substance according to this beautiful tradition of amir al-mu'minin alayhi salam youth just by the way i need to mention this youth who is youth they said youth is someone who is productive and creative you cannot be youth if you are not productive and creative spiritually you have to be productive and creative socially you have to be productive and creative so therefore your substance your rakika is to be productive in your life now the same thing bring it to dua dua when you examine dua dua has hakika and dua has rakika dua has reality and dua has substance and the best way to understand that is to go to the beautiful tradition of our beloved prophet peace be upon him and his family you know what does prophet says about dua ad dua mukhul ibadah allahu akbar the holy prophet is mentioned dua if you go direct translation before we go into the secret translation or hidden one mukhul ibadah is the scale of worship meaning dua is the beauty of worship dua is the substance of a ibadah example of ibadah salah example of ibadah charity example of ibadah doing something good ibadah has substance ibadah has rakika what is the rakika of ibadah is to all as they mentioned ibadah is nothing al khudu tadalluli ibadah when you talk of a worship of allah it is total submission and humbleness in the presence of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you pray you are submitting yourself to allah when you recite quran you are submitting yourself to allah and you are expected after prayers and after the citation of quran to be totally humble human being if after ibadah you are not humble your attitude is not changed for positivity then we have not achieved the aim of ibadah so for ibadah to be ibadah you need dua to complement it dua mukhul ibadah yani dua rakikatul ibadah dua is what makes ibadah beautiful you cannot imagine in yourself as a muslim as a believer as a lover and follower of ali al-bayt without dedicating your times for ibadah and dua you see as they give an example you see these lights or this bulb if you like it is connected with the source of power without the source of power this light is of no use you will not be able to benefit from the light in other words this bulb is in need of the source of power forever and ever likewise our relationship with allah and dua what is dua dua meaning connecting with allah we need allah at the inception and forever and ever we cannot be independent of allah for a moment 
for a twinkle of an eye likewise we cannot stay away from dua for a moment hence allah in surah al-baqarah verse 106 said wa idha sa'alaka ibadi anni fa inni qareebun ujibu da'wata da'i idha da'ani allah is telling our beloved prophet when my servant come to you concerning me tell them i'm closer to them now kareeb what is the meaning of kareeb in this ayah pay attention brothers and sisters allah is saying ya rasulullah tell them kareebun i am closer to them what is the meaning of kareeb huna? we have two types of qurb imma milkiya hakikiya aw milkiya a'tibari Karib here simply means ownership. But we have two forms of ownership. You have absolute and real ownership. And you have fake owner, fake ownership. Now question. Your ownership of your house. Or your ownership of your health. Is it a real ownership? Or fake ownership? It's not a real ownership. Because you will die and leave it, isn't it? But... Allah's ownership of us is a real ownership. Abd and Malik. What is the connection between Abd and Malik? Servant, master. The servant will forever be in need of his master. So therefore Allah is saying, Karibun ujibu da'wata da'in. I am close. Bimana. Allah own us in a true sense of owning us. We belong to Allah. So therefore, if we truly belong to Allah, we need to supplicate and ask Allah. When you come and sit and recite dua Jawshan al-Kabir, when you raise up your hands, Subhanaka ya la ilaha illa ant, al-ghawth, al-ghawth, khalisna min al nari ya rab, you have to have that sense of belonging to Allah because they said dua is nothing but izharul mamlukiya. It's to demonstrate that you are owned by Allah. When you recite for dua, Yukumail, dua, brothers and sisters, is not only what comes out of your mouth, it is your mood. It is how you sit there in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's izharul Mamlukiya lillahi tabarak wa ta'ala is to demonstrate that I am owned by Allah. When you go through Munajat of Amir al Mu'minin alayhi salam, is to demonstrate that you know what? I do not own anything. I am owned by Allah, and everything that I have is owned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Mawlai, Ya Mawlai, Antel Maliku wa Anal Mamluk. Antel Maliku wa Anal Mamluk. That explains the essence of dua. Now let's go to the second question. Do we really need dua or not? Kindly pay attention to this line. Because some will come and tell me, you know what, Sheikh? I don't need dua. Hence, when there is dua, my mosque is empty. When there is dua, it was sold. alayhi salam, mosque is empty. Dua Abu Hamza al-Thumali, mosque is empty. Say, no, Baba, I don't need dua. I make dua in my salah, in kunut, I make dua. I said, no, we need dua. And through dua, we should be able to discover we, who we are. Because narration makes it very clear. Man arafa nafsahu faqad arafa rabba. Wa man jakila nafsahu faqad jakila rabba. Whoever knows himself will know his Lord. If you're ignorant about yourself, you'll be ignorant about Allah. One of the best way to discover who you are and to know yourself is through dua. I'm going to demonstrate in two ways, then I'm done. First way, we need dua because we need to read ourselves. What do I mean? We need to audit ourselves. We need to assess ourselves. We need dua because nahtaj ila kira'at al Many a times, we are busy auditing others. 
telling them you are wrong you are right you are good you fantastic we tend to audit ourselves dua is a da'wa ila kira'at that dua is an invitation to read and audit yourself and to know who you are and to understand your faults and to understand your shortcomings that is the essence of dua when we seek to make dua like just now our brother said the dua kumail allahumma kfir li adh-dhunub allati tahbis dua for example allah forgive me those sins that hold dua that do not allow my dua to get to you and to be accepted by you when you sit there and this is very recited you don't just follow it you need to start asking yourself what sins have i committed against allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so therefore we need dua because dua help us to audit ourselves and to get to know who you are as one poet made it very clear wa lisanuka la tadhkuru bihi awrata mar'in fa kulluka awratun wa lin nasi alsunin isn't it said your tongue don't use it to mention the fault of others was your entity is also fault and people also have tongues and quran makes it very clear alaykum anfusakum la yadurrukum man dalla idha ihtadaytu you be worried about yourself don't worry about others so dua is an opportunity to get to discover your faults and to know who you are that is number one need of dua secondly why do we need dua we need dua haja ila idhabati al-ghurur we need dua because we need to do away with vanity and arrogance dua equips us with mechanisms not to be arrogant not to have this unnecessary superiority complex dua makes us humble dua brings about humility in us you know quran makes it very clear inna al insana la yatgha ar ra'ahu stadna insan will indeed exceed the limits when he is okay hence allah tabarak wa ta'ala through hadith al qudsi invite us to go for dua whether we are okay or we are not okay why because dua is an opportunity to make you humble what does allah says ta'arraf ilayya fi ar-rakha a'rifuka fi shidda no me come to me when things are okay once you are in difficulties i will know you and i will come to you so do our brothers and sisters it is not only when you are in trouble it is not only when you are in difficulties it is not only when you are in a mess but rather do our is an opportunity to make you humble to make you true servant of allah to make you understand your limits because we are limited by space and we are limited by time the only one who is not limited by space and time is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is why one moment imam amir al-mu'minin went to the market in the morning the market of kufa narration mentioned amir al-mu'minin entered the market he stood in the middle of the market and imam began to cry and shed tears the traders the businessmen they were so dumbfounded as to why amir al-mu'minin was there at that time and he was crying imam looked at them and he said you know why i'm crying because when you wake up in the morning early you come to market and you finish late you go home i'm crying because i'm wondering when do you have time and sit and communicate with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's dua so therefore secondly we need dua 
because dua makes us humble dua makes us realize that we are true servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lastly what is the yardstick to measure an accepted dua in other words what do I do to ensure my dua is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we make dua now and then especially in this holy month of Ramadan dua iftita Joshan al-Kabir we're going to be reciting very soon Abu Hamza al-Thumali no sometimes you have your own hajat and you've been asking Allah and yet there is no result what dua is accepted by Allah and what dua is rejected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let me just give you a few tips and we're done there is one way to measure a dua which is accepted by Allah what is that way that is when the dua is for Allah pay attention to this kindly when the dua is for Allah then that dua would be accepted by Allah how you see the ayah Quran 2 verse 186 said for yesterday let them supplicate to me let them ask me in other words if your dua is for Allah there is no way that Allah will not accept your dua. you know why because Allah promised in Quran call on me and I will respond this is Allah's promise will Allah fail to deliver on his promise Lord but why is it that you make dua you looking for job sometimes you're making dua to get married sometimes you're making dua to get promotion sometimes you're making dua to establish a business but you're not getting it and Allah promised in Quran or the only a study block where is the problem is the problem now the love from God or the problem is from you no doubt the problem is from us and not from God the giver gives every single moment but the receiver doesn't know how to receive if we know how to receive then giver is always giving as Amir al Mumin mentioned I will not supplicate to Lord that I do not know they came to Imam Jafar alayhi salam and they said to Imam alayhi salam we making dua fala yustajabu lana nadu fala yustajabu lana Imam alayhi salam we praying making dua crying to Allah but our duas are not answered what was the response of Imam Jafar alayhi salam tad'una li'annakum tad'una man la ta'rifuna because you are calling on the one you do not know one if you truly want your dua to be accepted number one when you sit during dua give maximum attention to the dua if you like unconditional attention to the dua not when dua is be recited you turn this way you turn that way you walk out you come in making noise law if you truly want your dua to be accepted that's the promise of Allah he promised Allah's promise not like my promise or your promise first thing to do during dua sit pay unconditional attention to the dua and today especially we have powerpoint presentations when dua is being recited pay attention and relate to the dua 
understand what is being recited and reflect upon what is being recited when at the line of a dua it is being recited that we ask forgiveness of Allah remember your sins and pledge Allah that I will never indulge in a sin engage with the dua that's one two if you truly want your dua to be accepted brothers and sisters because you don't want to waste our time making dua spending times spending hours and those two are not being accepted facing towards the direction of kebla it's a condition for the acceptance of our dua when dua is being recited it is highly recommended you face kebla you see when you go for an interview work interview you pay attention this is like coming to Allah's interview. Because we are told, whoever wants to talk to Allah, he should make dua. But whoever wants Allah to talk to him, he should recite Quran. So during dua, Qibla is so important. Three, if you truly want your dua to be accepted, raise up your hands. Rasulullah mentioned, Allah is shy. Allah is shy. Not to answer the dua of the one who raised up his hands before he put the hands down. So when dua is being recited, yes, sometimes you may get tired, that's fine. Raise up your hands. That shows humbleness. That shows humility. That shows sense of agency. That shows that you are determined. That shows that you are really seeking Allah. That shows that you are demonstrating that Allah truly and absolutely on you. And the other conditions of dua. Timings of our dua. Remember, dua is a rakikatul ibadah. It's the beauty of our worship. It's the beauty of the worships of the holy month of Ramadan. Timing is crucial. What better time than the holy month of Ramadan? And what better time than the nights of Qadr? There are certain specific times that when you make dua, quickly Allah answer. Best of them, the night of Ramadan and the days of Ramadan. So when we come for Amal, Understand these timings are precious. You cannot afford to waste every moment of these nights of Qadr. Especially we those in the United Kingdom and other places. Where the period between Iftar and Suhoor is too short. You can't afford to waste a moment of that. Because these are the moments that you cannot replace them anymore in your life. And last but not least, if you truly want your dua to be accepted, try to make sure that there is no hukukun nas on your shoulder. People's right, hukukun nas. When you ask Allah, Make sure somebody's right is not with you. And if that person's right is with you, negotiate with that person. In fact, one tradition of the Prophet said, on the night of Qadr, there are two people, their du'as will not go up. It will remain hanging. Two groups of people. You will make du'a. Subhanaka ya la ilaha illa Allahumma inni aftatihu thana abihamdik. Zalam tu nafsi. Watajarra tu bi jahli. Said, Dia dua will remain. Number one, somebody who eats the right of people as I mentioned. You've eaten somebody's money. You've eaten somebody's wealth. You gossiped about someone he didn't know or he doesn't know. You undermine someone he doesn't know or she doesn't know. 
You backbite someone who doesn't know. You have to go back to that person if you truly want Allah to accept your dua. And last, uqukul walidain. Obedience, disobedience to parents. You've been disrespectful to your parents. Before you sit for dua, ask them for forgiveness. Wallahi You've undermined your parents. You've talked to your parents anyhow. Your parents are offended by your comments or by your attitudes or by your behavior. The Holy Prophet is saying, go back, ask for forgiveness before you come and ask Allah on the night of Qadr. And lastly, when you sit for the dua, do it as if it is a farewell dua of your life. As if there will be no any other Ramadan in your life. It is an opportunity. Don't let it slip and skip you. وآخر دعوانا عن الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين.